We're here on a crisp morning in San Francisco, Golden Gate Park. Craig and I have come to learn something about bird song. We've joined Luis Baptista, who's perhaps better known than anyone else in the world because of his knowledge of bird song. Luis, tell Thank us you. something about well, uh, you, how you got into this whole thing of studying bird song and why white crowned sparrows in particular. Well, I actually started studying bird songs when I was eight years old when my aunt gave me my first canary. And uh, I had learned to call like a canary, so the canary and I used to sing duets together. And I used to think <laughs> that he sang because he liked me. And, and little did I know years later that the song was territorial, he was actually telling me to buzz off. <laughs> 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 but little did I know that this was going to be my profession, that in fact I was going to study bird songs for a living. And actually, uh, over the years, we've developed many ideas where we can show that many of the rules of uh, song learning in birds are very similar to language learning in humans, uh, which makes it also very useful as a model to study the evolution of human language. Yeah. And what do you think white crowns are, are able to show us? In well, for one thing, I can show you that the song is territorial because if I play a recording uh, of the bird, he'll think the recording is a male uh, trying to infringe on his territory. And this is typical of most birds, when we hear them saying, This is typical are, of most birds. Well, if you play a song, will we get to yes, see well, one? Yes, well, let's uh, try that. All right. Let's see if we can bring one in for you. Ah, look at that. Here Holy he comes. Amazing. Amazing. There he is. Oh, now, that's the, that's the aggressive display. You see the wings are down uh -huh. and quivering, Quiver. and the tail goes up. Luis has discovered that sparrow populations in different locations, populations that may be separated by as little as even a few hundred meters, sing their songs slightly differently. That is, they have different dialects. The territorial function is the same, but the dialect, that is the precise way the sparrow says, keep out of here, is different. Now we've come away from the California Academy of Sciences, right in Golden Gate Park, and we're adjacent to Lake Merced, where supposedly there's a population of white-crowned sparrows that sings an entirely different dialect than what we just heard. Absolutely. In fact, it's so different that even a layperson can tell the difference. Luis, how do these dialects differ? The one that we recorded earlier uh, has a long trill in the end, sort of like a canary. Uh, the dialect here has a big buzz or a vibrato in the end, and instead of a trill, it has paired notes. So it's sort of like... Okay, that's Ooh. the local dialect. Whereas the one with the canary trill is... See a long trill in the end, you see? <laughs> okay, there used to be a pair right here. <laughs> hmm. That one? There he is, right here. There he oh, is. Oh, yeah, there here he is. comes. Nice adult crown. See the black and white crown? Yeah. See, I heard the first half of it. Okay, come uh -huh. on. We need some more. Come uh -huh. on. We need the end of the song, right? So, is that's the other dialogue? Yeah, you notice the buzz at the end of the song, yeah. what yeah. we call it yeah. vibrato? Okay, that's typical of this region. Now, this dialect goes south several kilometers to Daly City, which is the, is the next city over. Then in Pacifica, another dialect picks up. So they're quite local. They change every two, three, or four kilometers. That's amazing. Let's go back to my lab, and I'll show you what these songs look like on, on the television screen on, on a spectrograph. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> these, these dialects right. serve to isolate populations, or what's the purpose of them singing ah, differently well, than uh, the same species? We think uh, very likely that this has to be uh, this has to do with what we call male-male interaction. Uh, we measure the, the time and pitch patterns and put them on a computer. And we find that all the nearest neighbors cluster together in a ball in a computer, showing that they, they learn all the very, very, very fine, fine, fine details of pitch and time. And what it is, uh, we think, is that they use it in graded signaling. In other words, if I'm speaking to you, I use your song. I'm addressing you and not him over there. If I sing any old song, it means I'm just mad, you know. If so, I'm singing your song, it means I'm talking to you and you back off. And so the, the different dialects then are really just a consequence of the fact that there's no mixing between populations. They stay spatially separate and don't learn each other's songs. And That's the two right. populations drift apart. Okay, now this is the song typical of the California Academy of Sciences. 
Just like right out the front door. Right out the front door. And you can hear this long trill at the end. Uh -huh. Sounds very much like a domestic canary, you see, because domestic canaries have long trills at the end of their song. Now, if you go eight miles away, then we come to Lake Merced. Mm -hmm. uh, and over there, there's no trill at all, just paired elements. Uh, that's the Lake Merced song. Let's see, that's, we have a second example there. Yeah? Well, that was noticeable out in the field, and here it is again. Absolutely. This is different as night and day, isn't it? You see? Chippy, chippy, bee. Okay. And even a lay person can tell these apart, you see? Some of the birds, by the way, are bilingual. They, they probably were born in the city and moved over to Lake Merced, then they picked up the second dialect. Uh, and you can show that they can distinguish these dialects by doing playbacks. If you play them a Lake Merced song, they'll answer you with a Lake Merced song. If you play a San Francisco song, they'll answer you with a San Francisco song. So it shows you not only can they sing these two songs, but they can distinguish them as different entities. That's interesting. See? Whatever dialect you speak, hope you enjoyed learning about song with Luis Baptista. From the warm Mediterranean climate and the chaparral-covered hills of Southern California to the more moist climate of Northern California, this state clearly has something to offer bird watchers. That's all the time we have this week. Join us again next time for another episode of Bird Watch and keep those binoculars handy.